Hey everybody, Jazzy here. Welcome to my day 2500 base tour of Thrill the Grill, my solo Warly world over on Twitch. So I'm just gonna quickly show you all the new stuff that I've been building in the last 2500 days. Uh, starting off with this kitchen. Now for a long time, I had these two regular crock pots on the sides like here and here. I ended up replacing them because I wasn't using them you know, the idea was that if I ever wanted to make monster lasagna or surf and turf with some special recipes, I could do that. But I never ended up doing it, and it was just slowing me down during batch cooking of dishes that I do eat more consistently. So I went with the 10 crock pots for now. I also busted down all these walls because they were just trapping me inside the kitchen, which, uh, which was less than ideal. By the way, the Oasis is now officially completed. I've built everything that I wish to build in this uh, in this biome. There were two or maybe three final areas down here that had yet to be built. And as of now, they are built. The only thing I use lazy deserters for in this world, decor. And they do look pretty nice, actually. Um, and then, you know, we got some loon trees. We got a totally normal loon tree over here. Glow caps. Actually, I, I want to check something. Is this a festive light or is this a shard? It's a shard. Okay, so now would be a good time to mention that. We got Eye of the Storm after day 2000. So, Warly has been keeping busy with the Celestial Champion. Uh, we killed him for the first time on day 2156. And I've killed him another three times since then, just trying to save up on Enlightened Crown Shards so that I can eventually get... Uh, all of my builds lit up with infinite light. But yeah, having the Enlightened Crown on me has just been such a game changer with the mega base building. You know, I'm not spamming moon collar staves, star collar staves as often as I used to. I'm not burning through lanterns as quickly as I used to. I'm not carrying minor hats around anymore. It's really nice. And, you know, I don't have to repair it like I have to repair a Tamashanter every once in a while. So, yeah, it's a big quality of life change for me. Uh, this is a Kloss arena that I've been working on. The idea is, so there's Loot Spawner right here, and I actually discovered after this, uh, <laughs> after this day count that there's also a Loot Spawner right here. But, assuming the Loot Stash spawns in the center, Kloss spawns something like eight tiles away and then starts walking towards you. So, as long as I don't do too many destructible things around here, these end tables are gonna have to go. By the way, I figured out that Kloss breaks these. Um, yeah, as long as he starts, like, even if he starts on the road out here and starts walking in, uh, it should be safe and fireproof to do our beefalo claws fighting in this arena. One really fun thing about getting this late in a game is that I can start to mess with larger builds and working on terraforming much larger swaths of land into, you know, custom biomes. And you can see I, I'm starting to work on that over here. This is going to be a Kowalifant Preserve eventually. In the style of, you know, this guy that you see right here. Koalas actually can't squeeze through one tile gaps. But yeah, eventually this is all going to be filled up with, uh, with pens for koalas. They'll be safe. This all used to be deciduous for us. This actually took the, the majority of time spent right here is probably going to be more about the relocation of turf than about the uh, actual building. Because bringing all this turf up from the grotto took an insane amount of time. Anyways, I'm going to hop down to the caves really quick. I don't have a cave base proper as of yet, but I do have a couple new zones that I would like to show you. All right. As you can see, there's still not much to speak of down here around the cave area. But I got this bunny village where what was an and is now an abandoned buddy village. Um, I'm gonna eventually turn this into a farm area because it gets a lot of natural light and I wanna put a very special set piece in the middle, which I will talk about probably on the next base tour. But over here is the one thing that I've built so far. And let me get a little bit of light up here. This is a weed farm. I've been using it for forget-me-lots, but you can use it for any weed you want. If you like the till weeds, you can grow those. It just takes a little longer. The idea is, and Lachanus has made a video about this, the idea is you spawn the Lord of the Fruit Flies right up here, you aggro him, or her, and you bring him down here. And if the plots down here are tilled, then the Fruit Flies will automatically plant weeds in all the empty plots. So you can quickly get a bunch of weeds growing 
in this one strip and then they grow really fast like every two days or so and you can just keep harvesting as many forget me lots as you want i'm into forget me lots i like the tea and i like uh i like using them as filler it's really easy food to uh accumulate but yeah that's all i built down here so far i got plans for this area we get a lot of natural shafts of light i really want to do like a, a chest zone back here a bigger farm zone back here so that i can do my farming in summer and not worry about wildfires. Now that I'm no longer building in the Oasis, it doesn't make as much sense to hang out in the Oasis all summer. It gets kind of boring, actually, because I can't build. All right, let's head back upstairs. All right, I'm going to hop over to the Moonstone area, which is where I've been doing the majority of my new builds in the last 500 days. And when I started clearing out this area, I, I, I had in mind that this was gonna be like the next biome that I spent a lot of time building on. Um, Starting with these zones down here, there were there were two spots at the bottom of this zone that were sitting empty for the longest time. I couldn't figure out what to do with them, and finally I figured I'd try and make some forgotten knowledge zones. So, yeah, in the style of the walls that you find in the archives, plus a few of these distilled knowledge canisters, which actually make for pretty nice decor if you uh, if you were willing to bring them back up from the archives. I couldn't figure out what to do with these wind zones here, so I just threw down some glass statues and a couple of wardrobes. Okay, here are the new builds, starting with the beefalo pen. Like, an actual beefalo pen, not just some corner of the map. Like, I wanted to give Wellington a proper beefalo home, so there you go. This is where he hangs out while I build in the moonstone. Here is my chest zone. It's definitely more expensive than the last chest zone in terms of scales and gold. This costs a lot of gold. It's a smaller zone than my main zone in the Oasis, but I don't really need it much bigger. This is probably more storage than I actually need out here, but considering I'm building in an entire biome, uh, it's good to have a dedicated chest zone. I was trying to figure out how to disperse the light, though. You see the placement of these astro detectors in kind of a circular pattern uh, going around this way and just accommodating the build so that the astral detectors on the outside are still incorporated into the build. And then one glow cap in the middle provides pretty much full light to this zone. Here is my moonstone kitchen. I want to make it a little bit in the style of the lunar island. So some anemones, some stone fruit bushes. I believe these are, uh, I believe these are sprouted bushes, not transplanted. I actually don't cook here because, ah. Oh. I knew there was one world setting that I forgot to turn off. <laughs> okay, forget it. Every base tour from now on is going to have frog rain. Awesome. This is a uh, this is a backed up world, so I actually don't care if they kill some geckos. It's fine. Oh, maybe they'll aggro the salamanders. Will they? Will they? Doesn't look like they do. That's actually a blessing. But yeah, this is my grass gecko pen for the moonstone. I use two salamanders to keep the geckos freaked out. And that was a long time request of my users. And it actually works out quite well because, you know, they never get heat up, so they're never at risk of raging. And it looks like the frogs are not angry at them or geckos, which is a good thing. Uh, this is where I'm storing all the forest turf. A little mole worm zone right back here. Frogs are gonna kill them. Yeah, I cleared out a lot of area back here in the moonstone forest. You see all these stone walls just to prevent regrowth. And it still doesn't prevent regrowth. They find little places in the middle to grow. Man, regrowth is out of control in this game. But yeah, I've cleared out pretty much all of the rest of the Moonstone Forest over here. There's still a bit of petrified forest over here, but you can see like everything here is cleared out. So I look forward to building over here. And um, as I'm recording this, we are in the Midsummer Carnival event. And uh, let's just say I got some plans for this area, which I look forward to showing you on day 3000 of this world. I've definitely been playing a lot more of this world as I'm taking on some larger builds. It's gotten pretty exciting. You know, I get to I get to terraform entire biomes. It's something that I don't get a chance to uh, focus on until the very late game. So I'm happy to be doing that on this world and I'm excited to be building more on it. So thank you, everybody. I hope you enjoy the world as it is so far and I will see you at 3000 days. Take care.